a little bit younger. My boyfriend and I decided that we had enough of a corporate life. We resigned our jobs, we sold our worldly possessions, which at the time amounted to a windsurfer each. <laughs> and we set off for Europe. And we arrived in Belgium and we bought ourselves a comedy camper van. And off we set on this wonderful adventure, touring Europe for four months. And it was the most beautiful feeling in the morning to get a map, because there wasn't internet in those days, where are we going to go, you know, and just explore. It was fantastic. And we worked our way through Europe, and one day we were in Austria. And we're going up this highway. Now, my boyfriend, who is now my husband, his car had been a Volkswagen Beetle. So he knew these engines really well, because he spent every weekend fixing his vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and as we're going up this beautiful hill, he heard a sound that I didn't recognize, but he did. And he said, the engine's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so luckily, we managed just to get to the top of the hill and started freewheeling down. And there was a SOS telephone on the side of the road. I had studied a bit of German at university, but I never pretended to be fluent. And that had been some time before that. And I picked up the telephone and I thought, what am I going to say? How do I say it in German? So the only thing that came to my head was I picked it up and I said, das Morte is kaputt. <laughs> <laughs> and they, um, they just laughed. And they understood me, but they came and rescued us. They towed us away. And I'll tell you the end of the story a bit later. But when people talk about corporate clubs, I often get the sense that they're saying, das Morte is kaputt. <laughs> because throughout the days that I've been here with you, whenever someone says I have a corporate club in my area, it's kind of like, it's a problem, child. <laughs> it's a headache. And do I really need this? So I have a lot of empathy for you. Corporate clubs are not the same as community clubs. They dance to a different rhythm, and we have to make sure that we understand the difference and that we don't expect them to behave like the rest of us. One of the first differences is that corporate clubs, they sign up to get these wonderful skills that they see a need for, but it's in work time. Now, all of you who work at an office, when you're at the office, you're in work mode. There's always your inbox, there's always your boss, there's always a meeting you've got to go to. You're never as relaxed as we are when we go to a meeting in the weekend. When it's after work, we can relax. So they sign up for having these meetings, learning these skills, but they didn't sign up for club officer training, for area contests, for division contests, and conferences, not a, not a chance. They didn't sign up for that. And then we think they're being difficult because they're not joining in. And that's part of the problem because corporate clubs often are isolated, and any club that isolates is often in trouble because they don't participate, they don't have that network of support. They haven't realized the true value like you and I have. So we have expectations that they're just gonna buy into it like we have, and they don't. And then we get frustrated. Often they don't communicate the same way we do. To them, Toastmasters is in the inbox, along with everything else. And unless we can talk to them differently, we often don't get through. So I'm going to share with you a couple of tips and techniques that I have found work. They're not going to work for every corporate club in every area. It's not a one-size-fits-all. There's no magic wand. But I want you just to think differently. I'll go back to my story of the combi camper van breaking down in Austria. I was very grateful it broke down in Austria because if we'd been in another European country, we might still be on the side of the road. <laughs> so they were very efficient, but they didn't fix it the way we expected them to. I thought they would just get a new German engine, because Volkswagen originally came from Germany. But they didn't. They got an engine from Mexico. But with a typical efficiency, within two days, that engine was in, and we were off on our adventure again. So the solution they had fit the Combi Camper Band, but it was an unusual one in my book was not what I was expecting. So today we're going to look at what unusual methods you can use to, if you've got corporate clubs, to liven them up, to get them engaged. And if you haven't got corporate clubs, we're going to look at ways that you're going to sell to corporates. Okay. It's going to be interactive, I'm warning you now. <laughs> <laughs>
So don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Club officer trainings. Corporates often won't attend because they didn't sign up for work on a Saturday. Sorry for you. And as wonderful as your event is, they will not be there. In my district, as Andre shared with you, we have many, many corporate clubs. So we now organize corporate club officer training for them separate to us, and it's on a Friday afternoon. It's shorter, <coughs> but it's at a corporate venue, and they will come to that, but they won't come on the weekend. So that's one way. One of the, who was it yesterday, it was the lady in red here. He was saying, you took your training to your clubs, for club officer training, that's exactly the approach. Take the training to them. If they won't come to your area contests or division contests, take the contest to them. They've got wonderful venues, often you can get them free of charge, so take the energy to them. And by default, they get involved. So that's another technique that, that you can use. I want you to think back the first time you fell in love <coughs> and you started a relationship with this person. And there were, you know, it's like Valentine's Day, you know, hearts popping, everything was good, life was wonderful. And you had this wonderful, warm, rosy relationship with your significant other. But then you discovered that significant other had a family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you have uh, challenging mothers-in-law? <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> and what you soon learn is if you want that relationship to go well, you have to nurture a relationship with the broader family, whether it's the mothers-in-law, the fathers-in-law, the sisters and the brothers. You have to fit into the wider context. And it's exactly the same with the corporate club. We cannot just have a relationship with a club and not with the corporation. And that's where we as Toastmasters, often there's a huge gap. Because we start the club, we've done, we've dusted, where are your DCP goals? But we don't talk to the corporate. And that's where your possibility and opportunity lie, and that is where your downfall lies if you don't do it. So why would you talk to the corporate? Because they have to see value in the Toastmasters Club. They cannot think that just by chartering a club, they've done it, ticked, it's fine. Because then they're not getting the best value out of it. So your challenge is to find someone in the corporation to talk to. The first club I ever worked with was a very small company, and they were very clever. At every meeting, they invited one of the senior directors to the meeting to propose a thought for the day. So they were very clever. They didn't get them a role where they would be evaluated, because maybe they didn't know that was <laughs> But they were the guest of honor, and they, were see they came and they sought in action, even if they only stayed for half a meeting. And the people in the Toastmasters Club were got to be seen by senior management. So that is one very clever way of getting someone involved on an ongoing basis, and make sure at every meeting you invite someone. The other approach is to go to the department heads and say, what are the issues you have? You know, what is it in your department that you want your employees to develop? What skills do you need? Where are the, where's the pain? And then inevitably, whatever they say, you've got an answer for it. It may be that people are doing very bad <coughs> presentations in front of potential clients and they're leaving money on the table. Have we got a solution for that? Yeah. Yeah, of course. We of course. So we can say, if you bring them to us, we can help you with that. They will learn to speak on time, speak with purpose. They will learn to be more engaging. And if you do that with a client, there's more chance you'll sign the deal. If they say their meetings run for far too long, can we help? Yes. Of course we can. So instead of going in, and this is my pet hate, when people sell Toastmasters, Postmasters, and they say, when you join, you get two manuals. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you signed up because you wanted two manuals? <laughs> That's not what we're selling. We're selling the outcome. The outcome is I'm more self-confident. I'm more self-assured. I can sell my ideas to senior management. I can be persuasive. I can be concise. It's not the two manuals. So don't get caught up in the how-to. It's the why. And it's what do you want your people to walk out with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so
So you've got to have this ongoing relationship with the client. Checking in, is it working for you? Your PR for a corporate club is almost harder, in my opinion, than PR for a community club. Because they've got to sell <coughs> any organization. They've all got intranets, they've got company newsletters, they've got coffee machines, they've got water coolers. Those are the points at which something should happen. There should be a presence there. Worried about your next presentation? Come and join us. Did you wish your last presentation went better? We can help. So just having that constant presence and celebrating what you do. And, and often in the corporation, people are shy to brag. So they don't want to say, I got my CC and put a, a photo up. But you need to. Because then if people say, oh, well, you did it and you did it, maybe I can do it as well. So you've got a constant internal PR. I favor the model of where a company does not pay 100% of the fees. Because those clubs are very, very vulnerable. As soon as there's restructuring or an economic downturn, the next thing, their budget has been cut and the club ceases to exist. But if people are used to paying a little bit, then you've got more chance of reviving that club. <coughs> Let's talk about corporate club payments, because that is definitely a motto that is kaput. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a president of a corporate club in my home district, and I said to him, how's it going? And he said to me, well, when I first joined, 